And so where you live is affected magnetically by the the, the orbit and the uh, gravitational pull of the earth. So going to another country, specifically in another hemisphere, will change the the magnetic pull or uh, reaction that your body naturally has. So now you're going to pick up these icons from another country and bring them here to a ley line that they have not been magnetized to. Okay? And in doing so, you are causing a, 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 an atomic conundrum for yourself because you've got these, these effigies that have been charged magnetically from one source. From, so it's like the same thing, like, you know, if you, they tell you, if you, if you have a, a car battery, a brand new car battery, you never put it on the earth. You always put it on top of something because the earth will drain the battery, right? Because the, the earth is magnetic. And so it's going to drain the battery. So it's the same thing if you went to another hemisphere and picked up some icons and brought them here. Then they're not, they're not uh, guaranteed to work or be charged the way they were when you were over there, right? So when we're talking about the spirituality, you need the ancestors, the bones from under the ground and from which you walk on. And so what mechanism does the, the traditional... Uh, the traditional uh, system provide for your ancestral reverence. A gungun has nothing to do with your hereditary um, ancestors. Nothing at all. You may have somebody in your family that goes back to maybe to one of them cults. And just because they came from Nigeria don't mean that they were a part of that cult. Because there's a whole bunch of cults out there. And when you belong to one, you can't belong to all of them in certain instances. So the uh, idea that you were necessarily going to receive a gungu and that's going to put all your ancestral uh, baggage in order is preposterous. So we have to think that there was a system that our and our ancestors who were actually captured by whatever way you want to call it prisons of war, slaves, however you want to describe it, they were brought here. And in being brought here, they had to adapt to the environment in which they had to now thrive in. In doing so, they came up with the system. Now, this system happened to be perfected on the island of Cuba, which is on the same ley line as the entire East Coast. So, we're not talking about something that's foreign. We're talking about because all of our ancestors had to have passed through Cuba because Cuba was the main port for where in which they were selling all of the slaves to the different areas. So Cuba becomes a very integral part in our history, right? Not to mention it was one of the only. Uh, it was the 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 the, the, the largest uh, congregation of Garveyites in the movement were in Cuba, right? So it has a, 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 a significance to our people over here. And so now those ancestors that toiled through whatever circumstances to maintain a certain amount of information and ritual uh, uh, applicativeness, right, that they maintained the system that they formed specifically for us in this hemisphere. So when people go back to Africa, you're already negating the work that your ancestors have done, even if the fact that you found out about this in this new world because of a Cuban system. It's not because of Nigerian Orisha that any people know about this Orisha thing. This is because you saw some Spanish person with some beads on and was like, what are you doing, mommy? And she was like, oh, I know somebody. And they have maintained that uh, that compartment of our history culturally, right? And so, you know, people get upset, but they don't say nothing about 
you know, like people will say to me, oh, you know, you deal with look me, but that's that Spanish thing. And I'll go, okay. And the same person will go and look for a uh, Haitian Vodun house. And I want to say, well, did you deal with that French stuff? Because that shit is Creole, right? They just happen to speak French. Now, people don't say anything about Haitian Vodun because those people are more than likely very dark skinned. And so it's hard to, to uh, disassociate them from Africa, right? Whereas when you look at the Cuban model, people use Ricky Ricardo when I use that. I don't say that in the uh, the, uh, derogatory because Ricky Ricardo, if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't know nothing about some of this stuff. You wouldn't know about Baba Lou, right? right. So, so that he even inserted a, and planted a seed within America to, to, to sprout the idea of Orisha in the new world. So what happens is, like we were talking, the dudes, they go they want to go to Nigeria and they want to become instant sages and experts, right? Because the E5 system, because it has been propagated by uh, scholars, it has a lot of books on it. And so you can pick up an E5 encyclopedia and you can go to Nigeria and get initiated and you can come back and you be somebody, right? But that's like the dude that just got the papers for the eight pole diagram. He never really did it. He ain't never been to Shaolin. He got the papers, but his Kung Fu ain't no good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he don't have no application. He don't have no master, right? He ain't sweep the floors of Shaolin, and this is the problem. We have this entitlement about us that we think because we're black, all of a sudden we're supposed to have access. And so I'm supposed to be able to just go in the shrines. Now, I respect everything that come out of Nigeria. And I understand why they sell Orisha the way they do, because there are some harsh circumstances. I get it. But my people are not going to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about when I've been reared in this tradition and had plenty of contact with the Nigerians, and I'm telling you, you know, don't go over there fucking with them. They're going to say you're 619. Because if you if you think that they don't need help, you are sadly mistaken, because the religion is dying, and the only ones that are maintaining it are the tourists that come over there and buy it. Because the people ain't doing that shit. Them motherfuckers is being Muslims and Christians and all kinds of other shit. So, you know, the, 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 the argument, people go, oh, well, you know, he's anti this. I'm not anti anything because I get the same smoke from the, the Hispanic community. They're like, oh, he only deal with the blacks. Right? So you damned if you do and you damned if you don't. But what I am offering is an unadulterated perspective because I grew up in it. So I've had my times when I was like, nah, I don't believe in this shit. Just to be uh, contrary. Like, I don't believe in this shit. And then bump my head a few times and learn that, oh, now this shit is real. And so I've seen the politics. I've seen people misuse it. I've seen people use it for petty uh, gains, you know, a little bit of power and, you know, just some, some, some fanfare. I've seen people, you know, misuse it for money. Uh, I've seen people misuse it for power to do things to people and ruin people's lives, right? So... I started with going back to the basics, the bare basics that what people who don't have access to a priest or they may have been uh, swindled or something, I'm giving them something that empowers them, which is in this book, how to erect a true altar that has nothing to do with killing chickens, has nothing to do with a reshit. It has to do with you connecting with your spiritual core, right? Which is what you were given. Nobody can take that from you. Right. There are certain guides and protectors and laborers. These are spirits that come to you that have nothing to do with your hereditary bloodline or your ancestry. These are spirits that were or as guardians that were uh, assigned to you by God to help you uh, navigate through this this labyrinth. Um, and then you have your ancestors who you pull on for strength and foundation. Right. And so I give a comprehensive explanation on how to do these things without the use of a charlatan. You don't need somebody. You just need a glass of water and a candle. You need the time and the space to, to, to dedicate to that altar 
and the time to uh, maintenance it and to meditate at it. And with these, you will have a stronger intuition so that you may find a true teacher or sage that can now walk you through an Arisha experience, a Vodun experience, an Ifa experience, so that you have a strong spiritual court that your intuition says, nah, this dude is, he bullshitting me. He charging me too much money. He's he trying to sell me something. Or he's looking at my daughter, or he's looking at my wife, or he's looking at me. He got something else in his eyes that, besides trying to help me. These things will empower you. And so there's going to be resistance because people don't want people to be educated. They want them to be uh, ignorant so that they can take advantage. And so we have more and more people who figured out that this is a hustle. They're like, oh, I could go and be, act like an Arisha priest and I could get a whole bunch of people's money and have sex with a whole bunch of girls and nobody's going to do anything because there's no repercussions because unfortunately it falls under the law like we're below the law, where the law's not checking for it, right? And then there's no consequences for within the community. So it's not like the people in the community going, you know, get torches and pitchforks and show up at your house. So it's an easy hustle, you know. It's like um, it's like selling um fake stocks. It's, you know, it's a vic people they feel like it's a victimless crime. Or oh, I got you. You were just stupid. You believed in this dumb shit. And it affects those who are truly doing the work, right? Who have no ulterior motives, who would rather not even be bothered, but because of their commitment to their tradition and the, the oath that they took in terms of helping mankind, they find themselves extending themselves out to the people, right? So now we have a... a a generation of people who feel entitled to information, especially when it comes to esoterics, and they don't respect the uh, the hierarchy and the the time that it takes to to dedicate oneself to this. So people want to go. So now what happens is you have people that get a godparent, and the godparent may not know everything, but they know enough to function. And then the person is like, oh, well, I was on the internet, and this said this, and you don't know that? And then they're challenging the people who are supposed to be studying from, right? And this, this comes from uh, poor school habits, because this is what's been going on in schools for the last 30 years, children uh, challenging the, the teachers and things of that nature, right? You don't got the degree, but what are you telling him? because information has been uh, bastardized. So people just like, you know, they get sound bites or something and they become an expert on it. Oh, because my friend went through that. So what, you haven't? And have you had a comprehensive discussion with your friend about all the details? What did they, part of, you know, what part did they contribute to this situation? And things of that nature, right? So everybody becomes an expert, an instant expert. Oh, I know about Arisha. I can I can name ten Arisha. Yeah, I know about Arisha. I know about that because you read it in the book. You don't know anything, right? You have no uh, contextual uh, experience or perspective because you've not seen it function and work. So you only have your perception of how you think the world is. And so, yeah, I can describe that. All oh, those people are they just getting possessed? They're they're having an alternate uh, mind state and you know. No, this shit is scientific. So, not to drown it out, the people that run to Nigeria and don't have a cultural uh, education, right? Uh, find themselves by themselves. So what ends up happening is you find some people and they got like a couple of God children, some people that don't know when to tell them that they know something because they know some couple of Yoruba words and you know what I'm saying? And they sing a couple of songs and you know, people be hoodwinked and until they figure out, until they have a, a real calamity in their life. And then they're looking for answers and they need real help and then the person can't provide it for them. This is when people come become despondent with the tradition. Oh, I dealt with a European priest and it just took my money because the the quality of of um of devotees is very is 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 very low right now. Right? Um and 
because of people do not respect the hierarchy. See, some things I want to say when people get in these traditions, you have to understand that this is a cultural uh, paradigm shift. So where you may have grew up in the house where everybody went in their room and closed their door and they didn't really express what they went through during the day, the tradition is not like that. It's built on a very family-oriented uh, mystique. And so everybody's in your fucking business. And you got to be willing to accept that, that that's a part of the cultural ties that come with that. You understand? Like you go to a, a drumming and a Risha come down and they get possessed. And the person might not know you from a can of paint and they start to put your business out there. They're putting the business out there so that to deal for you to deal with the shame, number one. Number two, so that the entire community is now responsible for your now your actions, because now they know. So now if they the Risha just get scolded you because you spending your money gambling. To next time I see you at a ceremony, I'm not fitting to lend you a hundred dollars for what? You got a gambling problem, bro. You better get that shit fixed. Let me hear that you haven't got the gambling situation fixed, and then I necessarily be opt to necessarily lend you a hundred dollars. You understand? It, it 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 permeates throughout the community your ills, so that they don't affect the community. And so some people don't like that because they don't come from that culture. So when they come into it, they become offended. Oh, why are they all in my business? And when you don't understand that this is a family. See, because the family units have been destroyed here, people have a poor sense of what family is. Right? Family is supposed to be in your business. You understand? It's supposed to take like a majority rules kind of thing about the directions that you take in your life. You know what I'm saying? Unless your family has committed themselves to some sort of ill way of living, which you would absolutely know that I got to get out of this. I don't belong here with these people. And that's fine. Some people leave their families. But once you understand the dynamics of a family, a family is open. So if you have those hangups where you're a secretive person and you don't want your shit to hit, be on blast, don't fuck with this. Because that's the, the nature and the culture of this. It's a family tradition. It's not really something that you're supposed to practice by yourself it requires community right and so and not the fake community not the sunday not that fake you know using the same church uh you know habits and then applying them to a new system because that's what was essentially is happening now so people are are uh, uh putting arisha into a a, a construct that it's not meant to fit in. It's not meant to be on every Sunday. It's not. There's no. There's no need to have an Arisha church. In all actuality, there's no need. There's no because when you when you become a devotee of Arisha, you bring the Arisha shrine in your house. Your house is now church, right? I talk about that in my in my Patreon um thing. You know what I mean? Like because I can't give this information out for free any longer. You understand what I'm saying? Now it's like I've been, I've been giving, and then and I notice and I pay attention to people be remixing my conversations and regurgitating it like they came up with these ideas, like they put this work in, right? Like they did this study, and I don't even need to address it, but it just is what it is. So I have to now to protect myself. I have to now put it in a in a context where people can necessarily like if you really want this information, you're gonna pay for it. You feel me? Because this is H O secrets that I'm and concepts that I'm articulating to people due to the fact just as to, to clear up misconceptions and any confusions. But my real conversation gets way deeper because I can't give it to the general public because most are not initiated or not educated to keep up with the conversation. So I'm always lagging back. Right. So but I talk about the house, when you receive a reason, your home becomes the, your church. So there's no need. So if you hear these people and they're talking about, oh, well, we're trying to get a Arisha church fund together, that's uh, that's 
Judeo-Christian uh, mentality attached to quote-unquote pseudo-African spirituality. There's no need for a church because that's when you start to deny people access to the gods. So now, my nigga, you can't come in here and you ain't got a dollar five, you can't come in here. But Arisha says if you make the sacrifice and you receive your own shrine, can't nobody deny you to talk to the ultra. You have access to them in your home, right? But what we do need as a collective first is to understand that in acquiring all of this African traditional uh, rhetoric, we have to apply the the um, the values of this rhetoric. So we have to take control of the commodities that it does that it takes for us to to maintain our tradition. And so it takes commerce, right, and unity, so that we can build ourselves. Not a church. We don't need a church. We got a hundred and million one churches all through Bed Stuy, Brownsville. There's a church everywhere, right? The Bronx, there's churches everywhere. It says, in, especially in the South, where you at? There's churches everywhere, right? We don't need another church. What we need is institutions. We need a school, right? Like I, I appreciate what Umar be talking about. What I don't appreciate is when he starts to go into the spiritual conversation, and I be, I'm a little offended because you're not an expert on that. So really, don't. Please don't try to articulate anything because you have not yet uh, championed that 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 chamber. So you're a newbie, and so you really should be careful about what you propagate because you are not yet uh, fully entrenched in the in the tradition. But his concepts of school, I respect. Now, is it is he the first one? No, I went to a freedom school when I was growing up in Brooklyn. I went to where you see Shula. So when, you know, when people, whatever critiques they may have about me, understand that I was born Pan-African, right? My mother took me out of board of education and put me in a freedom school, where you see Shule, right? Um, I grew up having a, a, a militant perspective on black affairs, okay? I grew up having a militant perspective on culture, right? So that my family has always been local me since the since the late sixties, early seventies, but the rest of the conscious community has not. They only just tagged on it in the last twenty years that some of the most uh, prominent conscious uh, activists become uh, participants in Orisha traditions, right? And a lot of them, if they did, like a lot of the men, if they did, they they ran to Nigeria and got some Ifa, and so that they wouldn't have to be uh, ritually uh, beholden to anyone, and so that they, they could just be, you know, grand old priests, right? So I've seen the all of the 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 uh, the changes in the quote unquote conscious uh, lineage, because I didn't even say community, because you know, like the, whatever they call the conscious community today is a newbie to the conscious community that I understand. You know, I grew up going to the African Street Festival, Dance Africa, things of that nature, when people were, you know, propagating all of this uh, drum and dance culture, dreadlock culture, incense culture, you know, stones, and 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 uh, uh, what is that dream catcher culture that people find themselves now? Oh, I'm a mystical witch, and this, that, and the third, right? Um, and so it is um insulting when people even think that they should necessarily have any kind of debate with me, especially if you converted to this. Like, what are you talking about? You have no idea what this is. You are still trying to grasp the idea of something that I understand, right? Because I was born in it. I am of it. So back to my point, the things that we do need are schools, right? We need farms. We need daycares. We need nursing homes. We need hospitals. These are all things that are acquired under all of, under the other three major religions quite easily. 
right? The Catholics have a Catholic school. They got a Catholic hospital, senior citizen center, daycare, right? Uh, soup kitchen. They provide all of the things for their people. The Jews do the same as well as the Muslims. So it is in our best interest as a people to agree on some sort of spirituality. Now, everybody don't have to be Yoruba, everybody don't have to be Vodun, but everybody can be spiritual. And then being spiritual is just connecting with one's ancestors, a glass of water and a candle, a picture of grandma, say her name, you know what I mean, before you eat your food. On her birthday, set up some uh, 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 a plate of food and a table for her. Honor her in her absence, right? If we do that, we'll get back some of the common sense that isn't so common these days. You feel me? Um, people, this is, there is a hope for this generation to be more aware of values and just universal law, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Because we've been plagued with the idea of crazy being acceptable because of our circumstances. And so all of the mental health issues that people that our community suffers from, we have in the last 30 years uh, celebrated that insanity, right? And made it become normal. And now we see the children exhibiting these 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 uh, insane nuances, and we're and we're we're befuddled, and for no reason. And we shouldn't understand that we allow crazy to be acceptable, including in our music, right? I would be a liar if I told you that I cannot listen to the music of the of the mid '90s that I grew up hustling to, because that music is just. It is a mantra for destruction, right? I am well aware that the music has does affect us, and I use this because I'm, I'm very redundant. I don't say I say the same things and I stick to the same guns most of the time. When I understood that Death Row Records was owned by Interscope Records, and Interscope Records was owned by Seagram's Gin, and Snoop Dogg's first single was Gin and Juice, my heart was broken. I was like, they duped us. They had us thinking that we was controlling the culture and the whole time they was fucking running, pulling the strings, right? And so the music perpetuates insanity. Kill a mother, kill a kid, it's all good, fuck that. They violated. Like, that's not, that's not universal law, right? That's not gangster. That's not hood. That's not anything. That's insanity. You feel me? That's what you, what a tyrant would do. You feel me? And so we, we, we normalize that behavior. And so we've gotten so way far away from our, uh, our, uh, our spirituality, which is embedded in our ancestors. You know, people will say, they'll say very ignorant things like, oh, man, if I was born in that time, I couldn't be a slave. You are insulting your ancestors because they were, they had to be slaves. They didn't have a choice. Like kind of, there wasn't no choice, right? Because when there's no one, when someone is doing something to you and you look to the person in the, that has authority, and they overlook the injustice that's happening to you, that has to be hell. And that shit is happening all over the world right now. Right? And so I'm not so quick to uh, jump on the bandwagon based on Africa. Let me tell you, one of my elders came and brought a paper. He's an artist. Right, a sculptor, a painter, a very renowned artist. And he left a paper with me and was talking about the child slavery going on in Ghana, about the coke, the, the coca, and the um, some other mineral that they got the children mining for in Ghana. Right, it's child slavery going on. 
So I say to myself, if this is going on in Ghana, what would make them try to repatriate all these African Americans? Y'all got slavery happening in your country right now to children, but you telling me to come home? Why? Is it because you think my race of people are, are mules that you need to put back to work? Because we don't work in America, we don't do nothing, so you're going to bring us to the Ghana so that you can take our citizenship away from us and then force us into slavery? I have to ask these questions. I'm not saying that's so, but I got to ask these questions. Because they had child slavery going on there, right there. But you want me to give up my American citizenship and come live there? No. I have to, I have to check that. So we're a little bit too zealous when we have this conversation about Africa because at the end of the day, Africa is like a gentrified neighborhood. That shit is already cut up. They already got plans for that shit. Right, and it ain't got nothing to do with us. We are way behind in the global in the global race. We're about fifty years behind in the global race. Whatever they doing that we think that we that we get wind of, they're already fifty years ahead. They already made their they plan, right? And so for me, people may hate what I if I say this, but I don't have any aspirations on going back to Africa because I don't know who Africa belongs to. You feel me? I could just be going back to a giant motherfucking Brooklyn or ghetto that white people are still in control of. You know what I'm saying? And Africans don't have the rights that Americans have. I mean, some you could put some shit on tape. They might not get nothing done, but the world will see it. That shit happened in Africa. Your ass is grass. Ain't nobody checking for you. Because I wasn't aware of the severity of the child slavery going on in Ghana. And like I said, I, I think to myself, what would make them want to repatriate African Americans? When y'all got slavery happening, we're the victims of slavery. And you're going to bring us to a country where y'all continuing that, that culture? I don't trust it. Right? So when people go to Africa to go get these African initiations, they negate or neglect their own ancestry. Grandma and her and Jesus had something going on because you hear straight like that. Jesus was doing something for her because you're here. She didn't die. She didn't blow her fucking brains out. She didn't put her children in the oven. Right? Under under, like, you know, motherfuckers were smoking crack. You was getting high, feeling good, and putting your kids in the goddamn oven. These people were being whooped and worked to death. And they still maintained and still made love and still procreated to have children so that you could be here. They made the ultimate sacrifice. And so to not honor them because you found some new African spirituality is, that is insane. And so I offer the people that the traditional system does not prepare you nor have a mechanism of spiritualism to address those that, that part of your spirituality. But the Lukumi does. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't pretend that you have to now become an initiate in anything. Spiritualism is free. There's no initiation fee. You might have to pay somebody to come get possessed or something, but ain't no initiation fee, right? Um, there's no requirements other than a glass of water, a candle, some flowers, maybe some incense, some rum, right? You know, some some herbs. Not a lot. It's something that it's a, like a potluck. Everybody can chip in and, and and participate in. So we have to um. Look at what has been given to us, what is available. We sometimes, in our zealousness for uh, victory or liberation, we overlook the things that are right there in front of us. Ron Karanga and all of that shit, that shit might have necessarily been a bust, 
But that Kwanzaa shit, not the fucking concept of a, of a Black Christmas, but the concept of seven uh, principles that lay out how to build a nation. It's a seven-point plan, right? Unity, self-determination, collective work responsibility, cooperative economics, creativity, right? Purpose and faith. Those are those are cornerstones to building a, a, a community, right? It's given to us, but we negate it because we want to do who do and all this other stuff. Let's start with baby steps first. Let's start culturally first, adapting to our ways as just black people. Right? As black people in America. Right? And then we can start to advance the conversation. And so I'm saying you don't have to stop going to church, but you can still put a glass of water in the candle of the grandma. You ain't gotta renounce church. You ain't gotta renounce the mosque. Jed, you ain't gotta do nothing. Just putting up an altar and honoring those ancestors and allowing them to transmit the wisdom that they have stored in their DNA and in their in their bones, allowing them to transmit that information to you so that you could have a better existence. That's all. You feel me? Most of them. So what has it, you know, what's the reception kind of been, you know, in regards to this book, you know, uh, can you share some of the stories, some of the correspondence, maybe you received from some of the people, some of the feedback thus far? I mean, well, the feedback is positive. The people that necessarily have reached out and gotten the book, um, a lot of people complain that they're going to have to buy another one because they, they carry it with them a lot and they fold in the pages back, and you know what I'm saying? And which, which is why, you know, I charge, the way I said it, like I, I charge $40 because it's not a book that you're just going to read and then you just put on a bookshelf. It's not a fictional book. It's an applicable book. It's a tutorial. It's an instructional manual. You know what I'm saying? So you pull it out every once in a while and you go over it and you see something you might miss, right? You have a concept. You go and check with it. And then, and that's just like, that's just stage one. I got I got something else coming behind it. But, but, but what I got immediately coming behind it is a, uh, an illustrated book about Orisha talking about the iconography and the motifs and how it is relatable, right? Um, and their usage of sigilism and symbolism, right? Um, so, yeah, the, I, I've gotten some good feedback from the book, but the book hasn't, like, caught wildfire or anything like that, and I didn't expect it to. You know what I'm saying? Um, because it's not the... Um, it's not the 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 allure that people want right now. The people want they want to know ceremonies. They want to know an encyclopedia on spells and shit like that. Um, and so they don't want applicable sciences. They want things that you know fast results. Um, and so, like I said, I didn't expect it to catch wildfire, but I've gotten good feedback. I. I was um content with the book, but there was some 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 uh, some corrections that needed to be made. But I kind of like just let it fly because I needed to get the book out because it was just kind of like killing me not to get it out. So I was having issues with the editor and all that, and she got changed some words, but it was okay because the 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 main idea or message was conveyed. You know what I'm saying? So um. Yeah, the book has been it's been positive, man. It's been positive, you know. So let's talk about the the Patreon subscription real quick. I'm I'm a Patreon, you know, subscriber. So let's, yeah, let's talk about that. Appreciate let's your support. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, I was on it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. right now we got seven people committed. Um. You know, this is a a course that I'm I'm giving because it's I'm giving uh explanation and um all of this stuff is stuff that if once you see it you'll be able to use it right and once it becomes a uh, second nature you'll be able to convey it to somebody else. you know what i mean um because the information is not mine it's it's been bestowed upon me i was just able to 
articulated for this uh this this modern era. You know what I'm saying? Um, for my people, because I was born into it, which gives me an advantage. Because I, I I'm I'm over all of the uh, horse and pony shit. I got I got that. I get right to the core. So I'm gonna show you like this is why they're acting this way. This is why they're not giving you these answers because you're not ready yet. You know what I mean? And I can say that from a perspective of yes, I've I've attained such uh, advances in my spirituality. And I can tell you, like, yeah, you being a little hasty, just, just give it time. Because this shit didn't happen overnight for me. I was groomed for this. Right? And like I said, I, I had my, my uh, excommunicated time when I was just, like, in the streets. And it was a part of me, but I was ignorant to it. Like, I didn't want to see it. Right? And so, when I would um, have these esoteric conversations with God in my, in my solace and those same voices would come and respond right and then but I had a context to it so I could go home and be like yo I, I, I literally I would tell my grandma but yo somebody follow me she'd be like oh yeah well you need to do this that and the third and I'd be like ah she'd be like well it's not gonna go away cause you don't wanna deal with it right So and so I've had um all of the juvenile interactions and interfaces with spirit so that as an adult, I can make sense of it. I can tell you what crazy is. I can tell you that crazy is a spiritual conversation gone wrong. Right? Somebody has been, you know, they have that, like, okay, they have these exercises. They talk about if you would like to, if you want to learn how to see someone's aura, that you have to spend copious hours sitting in front of an all-white wall and staring at it. This exercise um, strengthens the eye muscles so that the eye muscles are able to separate the, the light and the colors. Right? Okay. And such exercises are done so that you can see someone's aura. Right? But it takes a dedication to get to that. You have to have the time to commit to that. Now, once you open that door, it don't close. You don't get to say, I don't want to see this one's aura. It's going to show itself. Right? And so I'm telling some of my godchildren, be careful what you ask for. One of my godsons was like, oh, is there a bath where I can start to see the ancestors? And I was like, why would you want to do that? You live in this reality. Do you know how cumbersome that is to be talking to somebody and see a dead man behind them and the dead man trying to get your attention and you're trying to keep this conversation clear so that the person don't think that you have a tick or that you're crazy? Right? That's a skill that you learn. This is why, like I said, you the, the you can go crazy because you you lose reality. It's like that, that movie Inception where he has the totem, he has to spin the totem to see if it falls to see whether or not he's in the right reality. There are some uh, pitfalls to this. Like I lose time. Like if I get possessed, I lose days before and days after. I don't know what day it is. My godchildren will tell you, I don't know what day this half the time. I'll be like, what is it, today, Friday? They're like, no, but you know, it's Thursday or it's Tuesday. Like, oh, okay, I don't fucking know, right? Because I'll be in a different space in time, and that shit affects me so that I have to have certain things, mechanisms in place so that I can check my reality so I know who the fuck I am, right? And so crazy is that conversation gone wrong. Somebody's like they talking to themselves because they've been excommunicated or they've had some traumatic experience happen to them. And they like they start to hear a little bit stronger. And those spirits start to come out and they become very opinionated. Right? And then the person becomes and what happens is the spirit will gain your confidence because the spirit will tell you things. 
Like, yo, that's five dollars under that under that couch. And the person would be like, but the spirit would be like, I'm telling you, and you push the couch and you see the five dollars. Oh, now you believe the spirit. So now the spirit would be like, you know what? You see, born on law, they ain't your friend. Watch him. He didn't tell you that yesterday he was with Rashid. Ask him if he was with Rashid. And so Rashid may say, yo, yo, I ain't, yo don't tell Oba I was in town because I, I I wanted to give him something and I didn't want him to think about it. It was some small shit. And so you don't tell me. But then I find out because the spirit is like, yo, born is lying to you. And so I find out and now I'm like, oh, I'm suspicious of you. Until the spirit gets me to become suspicious of everybody that the spirit gets me separated from everyone. And after the spirit has separated me from everyone that knows me, the spirit will begin to start to take over. And that's just when you see people start to take on traits and habits that they never had before. Right? You know this nigga for 25 years. He ain't never smoked a cigarette in his life. All of a sudden, this nigga smoking a pack a day. Who are you? Who are you? You're not my friend. Where'd my friend go? Right? But the spirits are, are intelligent enough, the consciousness are intelligent enough to separate you from everyone so that there will be no one to actually see those nuances and be like, that's not Oba. That's not him. You understand? So that there is a, a responsibility even in my God children in, in observing me because I get possessed. So when I get possessed, they got to be on point to know which spirit it is and address him properly and give that spirit the certain things that he that he requires, certain drink, he don't drink this, he don't drink, and don't offend them. Right? They have to be on point with that. Right? So it's the same thing around family members because the problem is that we're taught that we are uh, one dimensional. And I talk about this in the book. We're not one dimensional. We're all multifaceted. Right? And you would lose your mind trying to be one dimensional. Because you can't stay the same all the time. You have to bend at some point. Right? So, crazy is when that person stops talking to people and begins to only talk to the spirits. Because some of these spirits have ulterior motives. And so this is why you see the person in the street and they can be talking to the nigga that you don't see more than they're talking to you. You trying to get his attention. Hey, brother, let me get a dollar. He's like, talking to this other motherfucker. Motherfucker, fuck you. But the spirit is antagonizing because the spirit knows that he got him. So the spirit, they say misery loves company. And so that miserable spirit that hasn't made his ascension is here to haunt this person because he has given him enough time for the spirit to become a part of his psyche. Okay? And that's when you get these mental health issues. And they usually happen when there's a, a traumatic experience so that the person's psyche disconnects from the body for a moment and something else comes in. Right? This is why we call alcohol wines and spirits because it helps detach the soul from the body so that another spirit can come in and be moving the body around. Right? And so we have to be, uh, and so I talk about all these different things, the different kinds of spirits that possess people, right? And how they become such when obsessive spirits come around because you have a stalker or whatnot. Right? Somebody is essentially having an atomic explosion. Right? When you when you have an orgasm, there's an atomic explosion that occurs. So if there's a man lusting over a woman that doesn't know that he's lusting over her and he's masturbating and he has this orgasm and this atomic explosion happens. The energy released attached to his intentions will catch the will, will catch the attention of a bad spirit, and that bad spirit will ride that fucking energy because it's directed towards this person. Okay. And we understand that radio waves, sound waves, microwaves, and all the waves, ultra gamma rays, x-rays, they travel. So this, you just had this explosion. This man just had this explosion and masturbating with this woman on his mind. 
all his creepy intentions have been sent with that and a bad spirit has now taken hold of that intention and written it to that person that this person now don't get no sleep. They're having bad experiences with people. They're having nightmares. They can't get it together because somebody has sent something to into their direction because they have uh, a GPS on the person magnetically because we have these phones. We have these, these sites, right? You can find somebody. And so we necessarily are not cognizant of how these things energy-wise affect our environment, okay? But like I said, I talk about all of this in the book. The book is it's more valuable than any fucking uh, words of wisdom, and they don't got none of those fucking affirmations and reframes to wake up this morning and say this three times and you'll be fine now. None of that shit. I'm talking about experiences and um and how the the occult sciences work because they're they're sciences, so they have they have mechanics to them. There's a cause and effect, right? And so I'm just giving that kind of information out to the people, but more so they gotta check in with the Patreon, because the Patreon is where I'm gonna get real where I'm going to get bucky with it. That's where I'm going to, you know, I'm taking the gloves off and I'm giving real shit. You feel me? The Patreon, is that's where it's going down at. You know, and then in order to even follow the Patreon, you're going to have to have the book because the book, the Patreon class is based on expounding on the book because the book is only a couple hundred pages. I mean, like a hundred pages. And so, so I didn't get into depth into citing, you know, and so the Patreon is going to be where I'm giving out book lists, like if you go check out this book, this is this information is there. Um, you know, movies. Uh, go check out this movie. We're gonna we're gonna explore some clips and different scenes and different implications of what they were saying in these scenes. You feel me? And how it applies to us or the, just the sciences. You did? Yeah, I definitely wanna I wanna see you know, what's going on with that. I know Cash was probably bugging. You know, I heard you talk about Black Mirror. Uh, I know Cass is probably bugging you about American Gods and shit like that. You see what I'm saying? So it's just interesting to see that perspective. And also, I think uh, was that new? This is a new series called Juju or something like that coming out. So you know that the that kind of mysticism. But that last little part you were saying about um, that energy and attention, I'm thinking about social media. So social media influences, do they have the same kind of ramifications? Because if you know in that series, American Gods, like the internet was you know, uh, was like a, a deity. You know what I'm well, yeah, it's because it, it produces a reality. And so you could put on a uh, you could put on a facade in that reality. You can put on a regalia. Right? You can take on a moniker. So when you entered it, you were initiated by when you entered the application. When you put in the name, the username, and your email and your information, you just became initiated to that, right? And so you have to be uh, mindful of what you put up there because that shit is out there in the ethers, right? It's out there in the digital ethers. That's fit, it's there forever. So if you got your if you got your penis out on the moment, that's what the universe gonna see. You know what I'm saying? You got your ass out. That's what the universe see. If you are propagating positive images, that's what that digital um, universe will respond with to you with. Because we already understand that the, the phones are smart, so whatever you be looking up, the phone already looking for that shit the next time. Right? Because it becomes accustomed to you. So it's a deity. It, it understands you. Right? It's listening to your, your your conversations and you open up your phone and then go to Dunkin' Donuts. You're like, damn, man, I could th think about some Krispy Kreme. Ain't come a Dunkin' Donuts commercial, right? Because that shit is alive. So, yeah, we can't disregard technology. Technology is a part of the human experience. From the very first tool, it changes it. It changes our nature. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we would be ignorant to um to negate it at this point. It's a it's a it's a applicable uh, magic. It's an applicable magic. You know what I mean? Um, 
Yeah, like I said, the Patreon, man. The Patreon, we're going to get in, we're gonna get deep into that. You know, and I, I'm putting out little clips on YouTube, just a little teaser for people to see, you know, where the, the, the direction of the conversation, because the conversations are not going to be about gossip. I don't give a fuck about no rappers. I don't give a fuck about no celebrities. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a shit about who's doing what magic. That shit, if they wasn't in the, in the uh, sacred room with me, I don't care what they doing. You know what I mean? I probably don't trust it. You know what I mean? Because I'm out here doing the work. I'm out there going back and forth to Cuba. Like I said, I'm going to these places. I just came back from Guatemala. I was on top of the volcano. Like, and even the volcano, that was, uh, that was, um, that was homework for me. Right? Because we have a, we have a deity, we have an Orisha that's dedicated to the volcano. So it was integral for me to go up there and see what that and experience that as it is raw to have a more understanding of the deity, right? So I'm out here doing the doing the homework. Um, yeah, I'm not really you know trying to sell no bullshit. What I am trying to necessarily do is monetize this information that I'm giving out because it's it's um it's pertinent information. Like I said, I'm not going into no politics. It's all metaphysical conversation. Why do they think like this? What symbols mean? What What are they trying to convey in this conversation? How do you pull this, the spirits? What phenomena to look out for when performing such rituals? You know what I'm saying? Um, how to conduct a real seance and you know and connect with people who really want to get their lives right by. By, by spirituality. You feel me? Not just they want a, a quick fix or they just want to be in something that's trendy. Because this shit is not for you, it's for your kids. It's to correct the next generation so that they have access to it, so that whatever information that I may have died with that I didn't convey to them, they can still get that, they can still tap into that information. They could put a glass of water in me, have me come back as a spirit and, and tell them in a dream, right? But it is about the children, ultimately, right? Because we can't, you know, like, you don't plant a seed for a tree that you're ever going to be under its shade, right? You'll never see that tree bear fruit, but you're still planted because it's your responsibility for the future, right? So that's what I'm doing now is planting these seeds it's not about my gener generation. My generation is only here to facilitate that for the next generation so that they will have a better understanding of who we are, right? So that their children's children will grow up like I did, where Orisha traditions and Voldoon traditions and Ifa are second nature. So that we have access to our own lexicon of, 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 of language so that we don't got to be talking and they know what the fuck we're talking about because we stay giving away our game. Every time we get a new word, we let the white man know what it is and he put it in this fucking dictionary. That's not the purpose of slang. The purpose of slang is to talk around these motherfuckers so they don't know what we're talking about, right? And so we keep giving up the game. And so it's important that we now start to um, uh, create these communities that are based on oaths, oaths that are greater than ourselves, that are to our ancestors, right? You take an oath to something greater than yourself. You sacrifice to something greater than yourself. You know what I mean? And so it's important that we have, have these um, these tidbits of information. That's what I wrote the book for. Because literally, I used to be on, like, I was on blog talk radio 10 years ago. And the dude was like, yo, well, how can I get down? And I, I'm like, where are you? He was like, I'm in Wisconsin. And I'm like, how the fuck can I help him? Right? I remember that. <laughs> no, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? So me and my cousin, we had a conversation and then I was, you know, and then I had a conversation with my uncle and I was like, yo, well, how do I fix this with the people? He was like, Well, everybody don't need a reason. He's like, everybody needs spiritualism though. And then he started to break down that why spiritualism was the, the bread and butter, like it's for the poor. You don't need no initiation money for this. We ain't killing no chickens and no goats and none of that. 
a glass of water and a candle. The title came from my uncle. That's what he used to say to me, man. A glass of water and a candle will save your life. He used to be like, when I was zealous and I thought the Orishas was going, give me the power. Uncle was like, nah, man, that glass of water, man, that ultra don't need shit without that glass of water. Mm -hmm. Because when we go into ceremony, if Egun, which is the 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 label for spirits and ancestors generally. If we're doing something with Arisha, the spirits are the only things that can stop us. You could be talking to to the ancestors, but the Arishas won't stop the conversation. The ancestors can stop the conversation between us and Arisha so that they are the liaison between us and Arisha because we don't know who they are if it wasn't for a dead person. Somebody had to know what this ultra shit is for us to even know how it is here today. So we have to honor that hierarchy. You know what I mean? Like, I met you through Rashid. Right? So it's not till I'm with Rashid again. He's like, yo, you got to check knowledge. Born. I'm like, I right, because I know him through you. That's the, 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 the chain of command. I know you through him. So I can't just go around and be like, nah, I ain't fucking with Akka. Let me just go fuck with Nala's boy. Nah, I got to go through the chain of command. And so it's the same thing. You don't just get to talk to the reachers. Or you don't just get to talk to God. You got to do somebody in between. You feel me? And so, you know, um, it's important that we have a spiritual foundation. And like I said, this can change our community because if this becomes our creed, as a people, that, oh, I'm a spiritualist. Yeah, I mean, you know, I go to church because they be having the jobs there and all that, and they be having the good food and shit, and I participate. But my real true believing is in my grandmother, my great-grandfather, and my spiritual guides. When we, as a people, have that to lean on, all the other shit will fall right in line. Because all the other communities are based on, on some type of creed first. I'm Catholic. So if you're Catholic, I give you the job. You Jewish, I give you the job. You Muslim, I give you the job. Right? So financial literacy and all that is within the creed. Because once we become brothers and understand this Lukumi shit, it allows us to connect to the entire South America. Right? So that you, they be like, oh, you believe in some Arisha? Oh, you my brother. Come and sit down and eat. No matter if we speak different languages. It's all good. We believe in the same God. You feel me? And so that's what we need as a people is we need a spirituality because since we've been here, we've been toiling with this religion. Christian, Baptist, Protestant, Seventh-day Adventist. That's why I'm trying to Stop this onslaught of all of this. Oh, I'm traditional and I don't fuck with that loop of me shit. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You just here as an agent of, of fucking dissension. What, who told you that you needed to go to Nigeria and get anything? There's a whole black American ultra house in the United States that's been thriving for the last 40 something years. What made you go to that? And then the crazy shit is the same motherfuckers that go to Nigeria. We had the loop of me dance class. We had the loop of me song class. We had the loop of me drummers. What happened to the traditional shit? Oh, so you, you just wanted to go get the powers and then you want to come over here and try to stun on us, but you want to use our, our cultural aesthetic. Get the fuck out of here. We don't need that shit. And so it's just it's just the, them allowing to create other things, just like Christianity, where you got Protestantism and this and that. Deal with your locale. I'm not telling the niggas in Condom Blade that they should be local me because Condom Blade works for them because that's where they live in. They live in Brazil. They've been doing that shit for several hundred years. I'm not telling the niggas in Nigeria that they got to get with this local me shit because they've been doing that shit for thousands of years. What I'm saying is fall in line to what is in your locale, what is in your, your, your environment, what is in your nature. The Nigerian ultra wasn't, wasn't prepared nor constructed to live in New York City, Philadelphia, Miami, Atlanta, or any of these places. It was constructed to live in Nigeria. The local me paradigm was constructed for those who live in the new world. It's just that simple. You know what I mean? I got to get ready to get out of here because I got some stuff I got to do. You know what I mean? Um, Word. So just give us final thoughts real quick and uh, let them know where, 
where to get the book, how to become a Patreon subscriber, YouTube, all that. I just want to say to people, give time time. You know, this is not an overnight uh, change. This is a, a, a lifelong commitment. And um, so, you know, you don't have to be so zealous that you got to run and go get some bees and run and get the, take your time. Become more, you know, if you find somebody that necessarily is a priest before you commit to necessarily being their God child, be around them. Go to, 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 to ceremonies. Get comfortable with the culture, with the people before, and then find someone who you feel suits you the best that you necessarily can have a conversation with, that you can accept their flaws because we're human beings at the end of the day, and then make that commitment. But don't be so zealous to, oh, I got to get me some beads because everybody else got some beads and I need some protection and all that bullshit. Nah. You know, find your way. You know, that was one of the things that I learned about going up the, the volcano is that you have to pace yourself. Ain't no air up there. And so you can't run up the volcano fast. You got to take your time. Right? And so it taught me a lot about patience. You know what I mean? You're going to get up there. It's going to take you a little minute. But you're going to have your breath with you. Or if not, you're going to pass out going up here, right? And so people got to take a little bit more time and be a little bit more patient with the process so that they first empower themselves and their own spiritual court so that their spiritual court will be able to give them a heads up whether or not they're dealing with a charlatan or somebody that they really need to be fucking with. You know what I mean? Most well, that's all. Thank you for so, that. Yeah. Your time. You know what I'm saying? And everything coming through. Uh, I definitely want to see if we can get a part two popping. You understand what I'm saying? So we, we can get some questions and get some stuff together. You know. And, uh, yeah, well, so like I said, they could check me out at Omi Dina Productions on Instagram, right? The Patreon is at Omi Dina 715 uh, Gmail. And um, we um we giving out this information. Like I said, the book is available. There's only one Botanica that has it like um, tangibly. It's in West New York. It's called El Cacique, E-L-C-A-C-I-Q-U-E. Uh, I shoot them out because they, they're like, we like, that's my guy. Like, we, we've we been running for some years now. He's the only person that has the book tangibly. And if not, then you hit me at OBD in the 715 at Gmail. And um, we'll try to shoot. You gotta, people got to be patient. I'm not Amazon. So, you know, you got to give right. black people some some. Uh, but you will go some some time. The Patreon subscription includes the book too. For those that don't have the book, when you subscribe to the Patreon, you you receive the book. You feel me? Because it's it's literally the workbook for for the conversation. You know what I mean? And so um, omidina.com, um, omidina Productions on Instagram. Um, if new people looking for me for readings, I don't do readings over the phone. Those people that deal with the Patreon, they're going to get a consultation. It's not necessarily a reading. It's going to be a consultation because I don't normally be reading over the phone. But for those people that commit to the Patreon, you know what I mean? I'm extending myself a little bit more. So they're going to have to give me some information and I'm going to give them a consultation about what, how their year or their month is looking. Right? Um, but those who want to contact me for readings can hit me up at on Medina Productions on Instagram or uh, at Coon7 on Instagram. And uh, you hit me in the DM. If you're in the New York, New Jersey area, if you can get to me, then we'll make it happen. All right? Oh, and Patreon right. people have the, have the option to see people, see me in person for a reading as well. So, you know, like I said, the Patreon is the, the, the that's the all access right now. You did? Word. Yo, knowledge, man. I appreciate the platform, brother. I love your work. Um, and I love your support, man. You be you talk that cooperative economic shit for real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> real talk. Hey. You know what I mean? Yes, appreciate it. You talk that cooperative economics, man. I'm peace be under you, man. Be well. I'll see you sooner than later. You feel me? Right. Right. And to the family out there, I appreciate you lending your ear and your time. Um, excuse me if I swear too much. Um, 
but you know, I'm giving it to you raw. So right. this is who I am. I'm not putting on no Eric Benet sandals and none of that shit, you know, to make we ain't white folks. I ain't got to make you feel comfortable. Feel me? Just know that I ain't here to rob you. Like that's it. You know what I mean? Okay. All right, fam, we out. Catch us at six, six thirty. We'll be on live. All right. What's up, brother? Have a good one. Hey. Be well.